and as well as drought. So it's going to be a very good crop to grow in, in Ethiopia. And uh, it's not Ethiopia, <laughs> sorry. This is the Republic of Bilalia. <laughs> in the Republic of Bilalia. <laughs> and, and if this is grown, the advantage of this is, and given the argument of um, the debate between the pastoralist and the the state, if, 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 if we can have this, this GMO introduced to our farmers and, and if they can agree to use it, which has been tested, would be very, very productive in, 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 in Balidia, in Republic of Balidia. <laughs> we, can have, we can have a piece of the land somewhere where the school is proposed, because we are also considering relocating the school or we can we can we can make some allowance here so that the the pastoralists can have a bigger space here and and, and and avoid the protected area. So we are we are we are appealing to the farmers to give a try for this first one year period. Let's see what the product is gonna be like and how how this is gonna improve your yield and afterwards we can now have further discussion. Okay. Um, there we will go to the tourism stakeholders and then to the pastoralists and then to the farmers and finish up the uh, first round of debate. Um, we think that um, if we are thinking of moving forward in this republic, we have, to, we have to accept new scientific techniques of doing things because we think over the years these pastoral people have been doing these practices using um, a lot of land and their life have not improved. So it's not increasing their land size that's going to improve their life. We think that bringing the school closer to them is going to change their mentality, is going to change their way of doing things. And we are ready to spend some money on this issue. And tourism already identified as one of the sectors that is bringing a lot of money in this country. We think that um, this land should be reserved which land? Could you clarify? Okay. Okay. The, the, the pastoralists should leave this portion and adopt more modern techniques of doing things. Even with the issue of the GMOs, we are think we can support that. Okay. And support the government. Okay. Um, um, just very quickly from the pastoralists, and then we'll conclude with the farmers. We don't agree with the second idea because this is a the water source is here. Here is very dry, so our animals cannot sustain in the Busi River. So we totally <coughs> don't agree with the, the second idea. We agree with the first idea. If they hunt this caracal and share the money, we agree with that idea. <laughs> Finally, we'll conclude with the farmers. Okay. The GMO should be tested on, on the farmer or on the specific area. The GMO may, may be uh, tested in another area and may not apply to the specific area. And also the time, the time also should be considered. Maybe uh, sometimes it may be applicable, but it should be taken in a longer period of time. Okay. Uh, thank you all for your comments. We have a, ta a proposal on the table, which is um, to annex this portion of the proposed area and to shift pastoralists from this area to, um, to this area. Um, and we would strongly support that proposal. Okay. Um, so, so there was only one existing proposal on the table. Shifting the school as well. And the second proposal is to shift the school from here to here or here? Up west. For us, yes. proposing two schools, yes. because to the north part okay. one, to the south part one. Okay, so there are actually three proposals on the table. One to annex this area, mm -hmm. and to shift the livestock from here to this area, to leave the caracal habitat uh, intact. The second proposal is to shift the school from this area to here. Mm -hmm. And the third proposal is to leave the existing site here, as well as have another school here. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Something with which we would strongly disagree. But another issue that was brought up that we'd just like to make sure is not a proposal brought up by the tourism folks was a road across the area. 
I would think that the international NGOs would be very concerned about a road cutting across the weaver habitat, but they seem to be silent on this issue. <laughs> the distinguished international participant was checking basketball <laughs> scores. <laughs> therefore has missed the pastoralist uh, <laughs> proposal, as well as completely not catching that the uh, tourism people were proposing a road. Well, yes, we uh, will reiterate that we are not in favor of uh, caracal hunting, uh, that we believe the road should be routed around the reserve and not through it, and uh, we'd love to work with the pastoralists, whatever they're proposing. Okay. So, so um, uh, the chair recommends um, uh, voting on the three proposals uh, and the chair offers a fourth proposal which is to table the debate until a second round of negotiation occurs. Okay. Um, How many votes per person? One. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so we can choose, we can choose, we can choose uh, um, how many are in favor of proposal one which is annexation of but of does that. each group get a vo vote, or does each person get a vote? Each person gets a vote, <laughs> yeah. That annexation, is each proposal a unique situation, or can they be mixed and matched? Um, w that can also be open for discussion. How many days are we going to be here? Um, well, currently, uh, the International Conservation Organization has offered us this conference room only for the next two hours. Only for the next hour if you build a road through the middle of the research. <laughs> so it is important to move forward with consensus, and so I encourage all the participants to think about the best possible outcome for the greatest social good and ecological good. Before we vote, could we hear for the, it seems that many of these proposals revolve around the pastoralist use of the area. Uh, is it possible to hear from the pastoralists one more time about their reaction to these proposals? I, I think that will be okay. Yeah. Okay, th thank you very much for this chance. Um, actually, we propose to annex this area. We uh, agree 100%, but we don't agree to shift from this area to this area. That's so, our so where's the compromise? Where's the negotiation? You, you want to take and take. Mm. Can't we have a give and take? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it is not balanced. We just because this is dry area and this is... Uh, well, otherwise we're, we're proposing to give you all the way down okay, to the river. Okay, we can leave this area and stay here. We can, we can leave, the park can accommodate this area and you can stay here. That means you, uh, you just need a conflict with the Caracas and lose some part of the Caracas, at the same time, some part of your cattle. You should also give for us, no, not only taking. Because <laughs> no, we, we are getting, we are we going to get money from, from, from just Caracas. We just, offer, Caracas. we just offer that part, just annex. At the same time, the area until the river, because you really need the river, the more, water body. More important is a river for us. We Without just, river, cattle cannot we just give the river. We just uh, give no, you no. access for the river and annex for that one because you already need the corridor of the this one and this one. So still you have access for water, still you have access for that, the annex, the upper part, but we just need only the border of the Caracas. Okay. Um, uh, given, given the complexity of the debate, uh, the chair suggests um, that we table the discussion until, um, until we can secure funding, possibly from the International Conservation Organization, for a second round of debate and negotiation. Second. All in favor? Seconded? All in favor? Yeah. All opposed? <laughs> Any abstentions? Uh, the proposal on the table is to table the conversation until a second round of funding can be had in order to continue the debate and dialogue. I have a suggestion. I have a uh, We've just voted to table the discussion. <laughs> right. The eyes have it. The table has uh, the the motion. The the resolution is to table the conversation until later. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not very good on Robert's rules of order. Um, okay. Uh, so now we've all gone off very angry in our corners because nothing was resolved. Um, but what do you think of this type of format? 
What do you think about, let's not, let's abandon our positions as farmers, pastoralists, state officials, etc. Do you think an exercise like this helps you understand the issue that we had, which is to balance different needs, both social and ecological? <coughs> okay. Um, are they dominant players that emerge? Yeah, yeah. Who do you think was most dominant? The, the, the government officials. Yeah, Okay. Okay. I think the pastoralists. The pastoralists, you think that? Okay. I was deliberately in this role playing. I was deliberately being more of a jerk than I usually am. Okay. But I've been to this sort of meeting. I'm sure Lee has. I'm sure several of you have. There's always a jerk. There's always a bully. Okay. Sometimes it's a government person. Sometimes it's an investor. Sometimes it's the local people. There's always somebody who will not budge, who pushes other people around. So absolutely, you know, absolutely, that, that's part of the dynamic. Right. Do you think that the chair was impartial, or was he favoring one group over the other? Okay. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, so th this is also fairly typical that we have a long discussion and we don't reach any resolution. Okay? Hailu is looking at me in shock. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> okay, have you been in similar sorts of discussions? Yeah, but everybody has just uh, expressed his view and uh -huh. don't accept the opposition of the others. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Tell. There's a state border conflict in southern Mexico that uh, includes some absolutely critical uh, lowland to highland, rain, rainforest to montane forest areas. <coughs> Very crucial. Actually, the discussions have been brought to the fore by the local people who have lived there forever. The discussions have been going on for 25 years to no resolution. Okay? Every so often there's another meeting, there are protests, there's this, there's this. There are new offers, there's new conversations, new players, and yet it's been going on for 25 years, and at the end of each of these meetings, it always comes back to either, you know, people staring at them, at each other pretty angrily, or <laughs> table the discussion. That's a great point. So, so, you know, you all as participants in a conservation implementation course, do you feel like this sort of exercise helps you actually achieve a balance? Is it helpful to hear from other people's perspectives? Were there things that were brought up that perhaps you didn't fully consider? Let's give me an example of that. And the idea of, I mean, trying to get, I mean, reduce the size of the protected area is not considered. So, uh -huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. And, and another thing that I learned from this is the idea of breaking all the government key players. And this is something that is usually lacking in other areas where maybe the Ministry of Tourism just unilaterally interact with the villagers or the communities and make a decision. But the idea of coming with the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of State, and all of these institutions of government that are key players is very important because. Eventually, if you don't do this, you, 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 you have this place designated as a protected area. And the Ministry of Agriculture will come back and say, okay, I'm going to give a concession here for agriculture. Mm -hmm. I don't care because you didn't consult. It. Right. So they're competing interests. Yeah. But one of the things we must learn for, and then we'll end the discussion, is remember it comes back to communication, right? And how you're able to make convincing arguments and what you might be willing to concede. And I think this is really important because I don't think we're in the era anymore of being able to say no. Right? Now, obviously, it depends on circumstances, it depends on context. But I think if our overall goal that we all agreed on was no species loss, right? Yes. Then they should be compromised from everyone. But doing that is incredibly difficult. And I hope this little exercise has helped you understand the process a little bit better. Okay? So
So thank you all for your attention. You've been great. Thank you very much. Yeah.